Okay, uh, Joomla extension directory versus plugin, uh, WordPress plugin directory. Yes, I will be using WordPress Word a lot throughout this session. Uh, it is because I had a pleasure to actually work with both directories all the time. Uh, and the purpose of this session is actually to go outside Joomla bubble for a little while and see how other open source communities, in this particular case WordPress, deals with the same issues that we are having as Jet and see what we could actually sell as an our you know, export goods to them and some nice ideas that we could help them to grow and what are the nice things that we could implement uh, to our plugin directory or to our extension directory, sorry, to make it, uh, to make it better, more efficient, easier to manage more friendly to extension developers and of course at the very end to people who build websites, so website creators. Um, first, uh, let me just get my language straight uh, and let's agree on the language code that will be also useful in the questions that will follow. Uh, so whenever I say extension directory, I mean our Joomla extension directory. Uh, whenever I say plugin directory, I mean WordPress plugin directory. I do know that we also have plugins in our extension directory, but just to make it simpler, uh, let's agree on uh, let's agree on that. So, what we are talking about today? Who have seen that? Good. So, for those who haven't seen that, that's WordPress plugin directory, or to be more precise, that's it, because they have recently changed their uh, interface. <laughs> And it's, it's, it resembles more of some of the ideas we actually have in Jet. Mm. So, this one I guess is a little bit more familiar to you. That's Joomla extension directory. Let's take a first thing. Navigation. What's the difference in navigation between those two? So, it's both search based right now. Uh, because as, as you all know, a couple of years ago uh, in JET we decided to change actually our category-based navigation into search-based navigation. Category-based navigation is still there, but it's like a secondary level right now. Uh, we do have tag-based navigation, if somebody wants to go over tags, and we don't have outer-based search. Like, there, is, there, is a way, there are ways around it, of course, but like putting things strange, straight, that's the way. WordPress, on the contrary, is also search based but right now like three or five months ago they have removed category based navigation so no matter they have almost 50,000 extensions there is no way to browse that by category like if you're interested in I don't know contact forms there is no way you could limit your search to that there is a yeah do you know why they removed it? well I was a part of the discussion and they felt like it's like systems of directories, meaning the categories is like very 90s and it's, it's not very helpful to go there. And there was a lot of problems with sorting, like, you know, who should be the first one in, uh, I don't know, backup solutions. Uh, so that's, that's why they decided to uh, go, away, go, go away from that. They still have tag-based navigation and outer-based uh, search, but those are actually pretty hidden right now. So, as you were able to see here, they're going more and more into that direction. Like, it's a simple search field, Google alike, uh, you put it there and you get your answer. Did you have a question? Yeah, not, not a question, a remark. Yes. Joomla had in the past a way to know what was recently updated. They have it today, we have it today in the web, but without the date. I don't know why someone omit the date. Well, and for a developer, it's very important when we, they uh, let's assume uh, grab the uh, or check the uh, update every um, once a week or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will uh, let Jess answer that because she's the leader of Jess and everyone, if, uh, if somebody doesn't know that yet. Do you have an answer to that? Yeah, we are planning on implementing that back in again soon. <laughs> Good, thank you very much. Uh, so, as you see, there are, there are some differences in philosophy right here. Like we're tackling with the same problem. 
So how to make it easy to navigate over so many elements that are in the directory. And there are two approaches that actually both communities are uh, testing here. So one is, okay, we'll do such a nice search engine that you can, it's like Google alike. Let's try to put the phrase and we'll find the answer. And the other one is more like, okay, let's try to put all of those extensions into some kind of catalogs so that you can browse them. Uh, and definitely catalog-based system is difficult. Uh, I'm not sure if possible if that's, if that's possible if we grow our base more and more extensively, especially because it's, we need to put those in the number of boxes. And if you look at those first level boxes, sometimes it's very difficult to figure out where, where, which box you should click to get to the next set of boxes, to get to the next set of boxes, to finally find the box that says, I don't know, contact forms with, uh, you know, with multi pages, for example. It's, it's, uh, it's sometimes a challenge and sometimes it's easier to, uh, to do it with a text search. And that's generally the way internet has shifted in the, in the, other, uh, in the other fields. So let's discuss the search engine itself because as of now, it's the heart of actually both uh, plugin directory and extension directory. So in WordPress, after a long, long time, they're using Elasticsearch. Uh, that was a hard fight. Like it took ages to put it in the, uh, in the right way and to make sure that we'll re the results will be accurate. And of course, the huge problem here is actually, what does it mean to have accurate results? Like what set of results are accurate for a certain query? Uh, which set of plug backup solutions should we return if somebody puts up backup? Like it's easy to say, okay, this is a contact form plugin, so it should, don't, should not be on the list. But sometimes it's difficult to say, okay, so, you know, what, what are the criteria? Uh, and actually, uh, I've been working with both communities trying to answer those and to find what, is, what actually we can count as a conversion. So what we can say, okay, so now we can say that the user has found what he was looking for. So it means that this query, uh, like this answer to this query was a good one. Because uh, in my opinion, it's the only way to evaluate any search system you have. You can only do something and then gather data and see, okay, if people are finding what they were looking for and we see that they are, you know, going from extension directory to the website of this developer, uh, or downloading it if there is an option to direct download, then that's an indication that this answer to the query the user has put into the search box is the right one. And I do believe that that's the only way to actually tweak all the, all the magic uh, that happens inside. In Joomla, as you are probably aware, right now we have actually a text, text-based search uh, in the directory, but there is a huge discussion going on whether we should implement Elasticsearch or whether we should go with Algolia because we do we all understand that uh, that we that our search needs to be fixed uh, but that's tough like I, I just went through that with the WordPress community and it took us like six months only tweaking the search engine after it has been implemented so do you consider Algolia with WordPress? sorry? do you also consider Algolia with WordPress? Uh, well I'm the part of WordPress plugin directory team so I like I know, for example, what do they put in a, their Elasticsearch algorithm, and what are the weights of different elements there? Like, you know, what's how what's the impact of the name of the plugin? And what's the impact of its update date or last update date, for example, and stuff like this. Uh, oh, my question was: Did you also consider Algolia for uh, WordPress? Uh, well, they weren't considered that because I think they uh, people in work in the WordPress plugin directory. Uh, some of them had like Google background before that uh, and they were all for Elasticsearch because they wanted to have it under their, co their control and they wanted to limit the number of people who will know the search algorithm actually so that's why they decided not to use some, as any external solution uh, at least that's what I remember from the discussion there uh, another difference that we have between those two in the terms of search engine is that we do have an advanced search uh, that helps us to limit certain uh, or filter out certain kind of extensions like we, you can only search 
throughout paid <coughs> extensions or only throughout components or stuff like this, uh, which is not the case in WordPress. You have no advanced search there, just a simple text field. So that's the set of results. That's how it looks uh, when you search for something in the uh, WordPress plugin directory. And that's, of course, uh, our set of results. So you can just have take a brief look what are the differences and what information is being presented, you know, how much. That's, I've been taking screenshots on the same machine, so you can see, for example, that the boxes here are larger than in here. Uh, there's like a couple of differences, but I just wanted you to be able to see both of them as half of you haven't been visiting WordPress plugin directory, which is kind of obvious if you don't do WordPress based websites. Uh, okay, now let's go to the directory team supervision. That's the part that is more important for actually extension developers, but the result of that work benefits all website creators. So what's the difference in the way both teams operate on day-to-day -day basis? Uh, so, mm, first big difference is what happens with the extension itself. In JAD, we have to submit the first version of the plugin in order to get accepted, but the truth is that hardly anyone uploads the later versions. Meaning that, you know, version 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 is not usually being uploaded to JAD, Mm. Sometimes it changes, like late last year uh, we required all the extensions to use Joomla update system and the, because of that many people <coughs> has uploaded their versions of extensions so that we could see that they use that. In WordPress there is a different philosophy, every plugin is being uploaded to their repository and then it's being searched from there, meaning that WordPress is in control of the code quality of, of all extensions. And actually, it do happens that somebody reaches out to, for example, my team and says like, oh, this should be fixed. Like, this is not the best way to do that. It happened like two times over five years we are in the WordPress extension directory, but still. Like, it's not the thing that we see in JET. Why? Because JET does not have your code, so there's no way you can get that feedback. Uh, yes? And if a visitor on the WordPress website wants to download it, is it served from the WordPress premise itself? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it goes directly from WordPress servers. Uh, that's one and of the that differences. Because WordPress is a more uh, free plugin driven ecosystem, uh, and everyone offers a free version, a light version, and a kind of pro version. But I think Joomla is probably the other way around where uh, most extension developers uh, prefer to have it from their side download and start. So. Yeah, I will, uh, I will go to the commercial plugins uh, in a moment because that's another significant difference. Uh, but as of now, every free plugin, so every plugin WordPress uh, extension, uh, WordPress plugin directory is being served from their servers. Uh, and also the entire repo with all the previous versions are available there. They use SVN still, I don't know why. Uh, but uh, that you can get all the all the old versions thanks to that. Then the response time, uh, asterisk at the end, because I have calculated based on uh, all the queries we have sent, because I, I don't have extensive data to do that, so I just look at, you know, last five years and all the tickets we have sent to JET and to WordPress, uh, WordPress plugin directory team, and uh, I've counted what was the average response to rate. So they are quicker. Uh, Maybe because uh, there's a lot of them. Like there's quite a lot of people involved in, uh, in responding to tickets. There is a very limited team that works on actually accepting the extensions. I think it's two people. Uh, but then when the extension is on, there's quite a lot of people who work on the support tickets and that's why it, it, goes, uh, it goes faster. But yeah, it's a five year average for one company. So take that with some caution. <coughs> yes. Uh, it's a more general question. Is so it WordPress uh, plugin directory run by the WordPress uh, limited company or by the community itself? Uh, well, WordPress plugin directory, as it's part of WordPress.org, is uh, run by WordPress Foundation mm -hmm. uh, officially and it's run by volunteers. However, as far as, as, far as I'm concerned, in the mm -hmm. WordPress plugin directory team, there is at least four people from Automatic. 
uh, who are obviously being paid by, uh, by them. Uh, and they do contribute their time, but I'm not sure if they're doing it on expense of their work time on the, or on the top of it. So uh, I'm not sure about that, but it's, it's true that in Word, WordPress uh, plugin, directory team, uh, plugin uh, directory team has weekly meetings uh, and they do have more resources than we do. Like I can easily say, see that they have more like development capacities and stuff like this. Uh, for at their, at their disposal. <coughs> so, the thing you wanted to uh, discuss, Ashwin, uh, status of commercial plugins in the, uh, in the repositories. WordPress. So, both WordPress and Joomla, uh, it's only GPL compliant. So, it's, uh, we have the same set of rules here. However, the difference is between free and paid plugins. So, the, those paid download plugins, let's call it like this. Because in Joomla, as you all know, we do have a possibility to list paid plugins in the repository, uh, which is not true on the WordPress side. Like you can't have a commercial plugin there. What's the consequence? The consequence of this fact is that unfortunately there's a lot of those light versions of plugins or freemium versions of plugins which do hardly anything, just uh, and mainly advertise the paid version. Mm, and that's one of the biggest problems of uh, WordPress plugin directory because it's full of trash and full of those uh, extensions that hardly do anything. Mm. Of course, there is a rule within the uh, WordPress plugin directory that you can't upload plugin which only purpose is to sell your commercial plugin. Uh, but still, people often find some different tweaks to go around it. So. This decision by WordPress has caused a lot of problems and a lot of, I, yeah, I will name it trash. Sorry? Damage. Damage, yeah, I do think it's, it's harmful to them. Uh, so in terms of serving the, uh, the, com the business market, that's, that's different. And it's also about philosophy. Like whenever uh, uh, I, brought, I bring up the idea like, that will be difficult for, for plugin developers, they always say like, we don't care about plugin developers, we focus on our end users and that's their very straightforward message. So WordPress plugin directory team is vested into helping users and they don't really care whether this will affect developer, plugin developers or not really. <coughs> uh, they just believe like they have to accommodate somehow and that's it. I do believe that in Joomla we have a little bit different approach and we take both in like we we look into interest of both uh, both extension developers and we have safe creators in here. Update handling. So we've discussed this a little bit already, and let's get a little bit deeper into that. So in terms of free extensions, uh, WordPress handles all the free plugins from their servers. So everything that is in WordPress directory uh, will be handled from WordPress servers. In Joomla, we don't have that. In Joomla, uh, all the updates are being handled from extension developers servers. Uh, that's how it happens. But the thing is, when it comes to commercial plugins, that's of a bigger problem, because in WordPress, there is no way to handle that. So many developers are actually unprepared to handle the updates and then they develop a, a lot of different solutions to handle commercial updates. So although there is a standard for WordPress plugin commercial updates, it's hardly used. So every WordPress plugin, almost every WordPress plugin has different way to update, different way to, ways to authenticate those updates and stuff like this. Uh, in Joomla, luckily it looks differently because uh, most of the paid extensions use uh, the update system and we do enforce that right now. So this way the update procedure for both free and paid extensions is standardized right now. Uh, and I'm sure there are still some extensions out there that are not there yet, but we're getting there fast and, mm, and it's way more organized. So it's also easier, for example, to work on extensions that will manage those updates and stuff like this. Like for us, for example, oh, sorry, uh, it's, uh, it's way easier to, to work with Joomla extensions as it's all standardized. 
Oh, I believe I think it was boring. <laughs> so, uh, standalone versus embedded directory, that's another thing, because as you all know, we the plugin directory, it's not only a website you can visit, it's also a part of either WordPress or Joomla. Hey, Anibal. Uh, so we have another interface that is built into the CMS that you can use uh, here. And there are some specifics here that I will, I will also like to show you. So first of all, in WordPress, mm -hmm. you have a similar look and feel in both parts. <laughs> or it's actually not true in the very moment because they have just changed the UI of their website version. So the UI of the, uh, of the embedded directory is a little bit different. Uh, in Joomla, that's a permanent state for quite a, quite a while. So we have updated our Jet, our Jet, the website version of Jet, two or three years ago, and we're still waiting in line to do this uh, with the with the embedded version. So right now, they are different. Uh, so that's one thing. But when it comes to search results, right now, uh, WordPress still use their API, meaning that no matter the look and feel for now is a little bit different, the search results, its ordering will be exactly the same because they are using API that pulls the, uh, the, that pulls the results from, this, uh, from the, using the same algorithm as they use on the website. This is not true when it comes to Joomla. Uh, Joomla returns different results when you search for the same thing in websites and in embedded plugin right now. Uh, then, uh, Another difference is that whether the directory, the plugin directory is installed, is pre-installed or not. So in WordPress it is, like it's, it's, it's there no matter you want it or not, you can't uninstall it by any way, it's not a plugin that you can turn off. Uh, in Joomla it's installed on, dem on demand only, uh, so that's another different approach we have here. So that's the WordPress embedded plugin directory. That's how it looks. Uh, and obviously that's the Joomla one, which I'm sure you're more, fam more, fa more familiar with. Contributing, yes? A question about the previous ones. What do you personally think is better, to integrate or have it separate one? You mean whether that should be uh, installed by default or on demand? Yeah. Well, yesterday, as some of you may know, I get away for a little while from here and I went to WordCamp Poland to have a presentation there. Uh, yes, that's true. Uh, and I was talking about uh, actually the history of WordPress, how WordPress get where they actually are right now. And one of the biggest steps on their way to their current power was actually the version where they have introduced plugins uh, and WordPress become extensible. And I do believe that extensibility is one of the biggest advantages of Joomla as well, so we should not hide it in any way. We should not. Uh, we should make it as simple as possible for people to use extensions, because this helps our ecosystem. But it also help. It helps both sides of the ecosystem. It helps both extension developers, but it also helps end users to find easier the things they need. So yes, if I were able to do this decision myself, I would probably go for. Install, installing it automatically. I think the decision probably was made only because we didn't have enough volunteers to update the uh, web installer when I think Joomla 3.6 came out. That's the only reason it was made uh, optional. Otherwise, that was the first time always. I think it's always not optional. No, it was, uh, when we started off, it was always there. Yeah. And then it, made, uh, it was optional. Because uh, volunteers stuff so Nobody is there to actually update it, that's why we just made it. So even it wasn't a plugin to start with, it was actually uh, right there, and then we made a plugin and then we made it install. So that's what we Good. Let's get back to contributing, because as you just heard, it's sometimes things are different than we would like them to have because we have limited resources. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about uh, how contributing to both the, to, bo to those both that directories looks like. So in WordPress, WordPress plugin directory is actually managed by two teams. There's a meta team and plugins team. 
Uh, Meta is all about managing the software itself and making sure it's up and running, developing new versions and stuff like this. Uh, and then they have plugins team, which actually deals with what's in the system. So they're, uh, they're answering support tickets, they're making, they are accepting new plugins and stuff like this. So there are like two different teams. One is more for development, the other is more for maintenance, uh, actually, of the system. And they, they don't develop it, they just make sure that uh, that it works fine. Uh, in Joomla, as you probably all know, we have the JET team as a part of operation department, operations department. I'm very happy to have both Jess from the JET team leader and Peter, department coordinator for operations here. Animal. Sorry? Animal. Yeah, an animal who is an assistant leader in JET as far as I remember. As I remember. Uh, so if you want to learn more about the teams, you have links to uh, either WordPress teams to see how they are organized or to the JET team. Uh, and what's more, WordPress is actively looking for testers for their new version. So if you want to learn something about the other side, do go and take a look on that. Uh, and we have like an ongoing call for members in JET because we do need uh, more development resources uh, and more support specialists and more people who could help us push uh, JET forward. Because, as said earlier, extensibility is one of the most important features of Joomla and that's what makes it so good. Because of course you can do a lot with the core, but most websites actually require building on top of it and extensions are perfect fit for that. So that is why, in my opinion, Jet Team is one of the crucial teams we have in. So if you do have some time and you're willing to help Joomla prosper, and help Joomla empower all the website creators uh, out there, then do consider contributing to, uh, to that team. Okay, uh, putting that all together, what we can learn from each other, what elements we can uh, incorporate, or what, is, what are our expert goods? Uh, before answering this question myself, uh, I actually would like to ask you, what are your ideas right now? Maybe let's start from, from the expert side, like where, are, where we are on the strong side and what we could send to WordPress community as our advice, like what you could do better or what you could learn from us. Any ideas? Robert? The obvious one to me is encourage commercial development on the WordPress side. So to make it available for commercial plugins. Yeah. Okay. That's one. Any other ideas? What could be the other advice we would send their way? Move to Git. <laughs> yes. What? Move to Git. <laughs> yeah, SVN is kind of old. Well, okay. There's one thing that we do slightly better than members. We do really badly. I think it's something we should learn from. That is trying to find related add-ons. I think WordPress, if you install one of their big shopping carts and you look for add-ons for that shopping cart, it's incredibly difficult to find them. The search just, just doesn't do it. We do it slightly better because we have the grouping. If you've got Virtuemont, you can find things related to Virtuemont. But I think we should do that better still because it's difficult to find. Yeah, but we at least try to address this issue. That is true. That uh, for if you, it goes also the other way. Like I'm sure you were the biggest uh, WordPress uh, e-commerce solution, WooCommerce. Uh, try to find that in plugin directory. Like there are hundreds of extensions to WooCommerce. Uh, so it's WooCommerce for phrase WooCommerce is like on the third page. Yeah, the well, it's always a difficult thing. Okay, let's go forward. Uh, what I find this uh, difficult in WordPress is they say uh, compatibility up to a certain version. Uh, we have everything's compatible with version 3. That's, uh, that's true. And the thing is that in the as far as I'm concerned, in the uh, in the update system in Joomla, you can say you can put from which version to which version, which is different from WordPress, where you say it's just up to this version. So it appears like you are compatible with everything from uh, from from the very beginning, which is not always the case. Uh, good, you had one uh, more so, idea. Uh, do you have any insights on the review process because because the number, I mean, forty-eight thousand seems pretty high, and you also said that there's a lot of those extensions that do nothing. So, uh, do we have a more refined uh, approval process like we have the jet checker, we have uh, manual review process? So, uh, we say it's more, it's better. Or? 
Well, I think that actually in case of the way we approve extensions, we could learn from each other. Because uh, as I rem if I remember it right, because I'm, I'm not a support specialist on either of those, so I may not know all the, all the WordPress stuff and even all our stuff. Uh, but WordPress, as, as you upload all the code, uh, they have some kind of automatic testing, so similar to our jet checker. Uh, and then they, they have a lot of rules, like they look for certain things that are not allowed and they just make sure it's there, it's not there. So it, it takes way, I think it's like three days on average to get your plugin accepted in, uh, in WordPress plugin directory and we are not even close to that, as far as I'm concerned in, and, in the jet. And a developer that is currently working, uh, creating an extension for WordPress, told me that uh, extension in WordPress are easy to combine. This hook system to, mm -hmm. to, to extend the core is easier to combine instead of our event, uh, work, uh, eventing system. Meaning that the core is written in a way that it's easier for plugins to work together? Yeah. Maybe. That's, uh, I'm not a developer no. uh, anymore, so I, I, can, a, I can't a, tell a, you. A user perception. Yeah. But maybe from what I see from different, like, I've seen a lot of websites using different either Joomla extensions or WordPress plugins, and there are always some tweaks. Well, I would say in WordPress, the problem is that there is way less things in the call. So if you, for example, uh, install, I don't know, the huge ACL component to WordPress to have the ACL, because something, sometime back then they didn't have ACL in, in their place, uh, then the other extensions will not work with that, because that's all custom code yeah. uh, written by one of the companies. and in, in Joomla, we have way more things in the box, which sometimes is a benefit. Uh, so that will be the answer. Okay, maybe let's try to turn it the other way. What we can learn from them? Like, what do you think we could adapt from the WordPress community uh, and for the WordPress plugin directory for our JET plugin directory? Jess? The design is a lot clearer, a lot more user-friendly, easier to understand. Okay. It makes sense look old. I didn't thought about that actually, but thank you for the observation. <laughs> Sorry? She's right. Okay. So we have design on the list, Peter? Um, well, I'm not sure if, if it's better with WordPress, but we should definitely improve the rating system. Because the whole pie chart thing is weird. It stars are much more recognized. Yeah, we stepped away from stars. Mm. Yeah, that may be the thing. Yeah. Stars are like standard standard across everything. Okay. It's easier to understand, even though circles. I mean, I'm not sure how many people really use the. I mean, a lot of people I'm sure use the rating to identify which is a good one, but the circles definitely not helping that is. Uh, okay. Any other ideas, Robert? So, we have a number of downloads for an extension. What's interesting on the WordPress plugins. Uh, directories that they have the listing of active installs because they can control. They can control it. Well, we it's we can do it too, actually, but no, we can't because we don't serve updates. Correct. So we we don't see how many websites are asking for the updates. But that's an interesting unique feature, so yeah. it gives a lot of. Well, the general statistics plugin could give you that information. We'd have to track that. Yes. Okay, let's go to this side. Yeah. Uh, following on that, uh, you see that the, I I didn't know that the WordPress is taking a lot on, on them. They are hosting uh, all the extensions, they are hosting updates. Imagine the traffic they are getting from that. And imagine the infrastructure to handle that. And the, you know, that's interesting from my point of view, right? Because you're from hosting company. Yeah, I'm, I'm hosting company in CDO. <laughs> <laughs> so how much does it cost, right, to do that? And if they are, I don't know, do they have it from their own resources or they are sponsored for that? Well, they don't would have it, much. Joomla would be able to do the same. Of well, course, you know, that access is here, so... <laughs> <laughs> I would answer that in a different way. Of course, the infrastructure for that will cost a lot of money, but think also about the power of information that you get thanks to that. Like, think of all the data that they have thanks to that. We don't have. And think of all the information we can use, for example, to filter out plugins and give better results. For example, based on number of active installs, uh, Robert just mentioned. So I do believe it, that it costs, but infrastructure nowadays 
it's not a problem, you know, I even have it on my back. Yeah. Um, that it's, it's not about infrastructure anymore. Bandwidth is cheap, storage is cheap, unless you're in India, because then bandwidth is expensive, from what I heard. Uh, but still, uh, I think the information you get is way more valuable than the cost you need to pay for, for the infrastructure. And data is the new dollar. Yeah. Uh, it's about the infrastructure either. Um, if we were to start to think about doing that on Joomla, it would immediately impact the developers who have paid extensions. Because at the moment, they can charge how they want, the different subscription models, the different pricing plans, etc. The minute that we start to think about providing downloads from Jet, we immediately take that freedom away from the developers. And I not precisely Jet. Not, not we could serve only the uh, the commercial updates based on the API key, yeah. and how they obtain the API key is up to them, yeah. and how they sell that. In fact, the install install from where only supports uh, somewhat. Uh, it's possible to actually install paid extensions to the installer because we have a way we have a plugin that does that, and this would be very easily extended to support um, all paid extensions. And we could just start with free for example. <coughs> Okay, we have another idea here. Uh, uh, have you considered uh, hosting uh, extensions on Jet, maybe? Well, that's not a question to me, I think that's the question to Jazz. Because uh, from my perspective, it would be uh, very beneficial, at least for free extensions. And uh, for, for example, uh, I know my Joomla is offering free uh, web pages for Joomla community, blah, blah, blah. Uh, then uh, maybe we could... Uh, uh, connect Jet with that and the... You mean Joomla.com? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so each uh, extension developer who ha offers free extension can get a page and where he could promote it, uh, take a screenshot, etc, etc. Mm -hmm. But uh, even for commercial, uh, th th it could be there. Yeah, that sounds like a very beginning of Joomla shop, actually. Because uh, it is true... Oh, but why not? Yeah, why not? I don't say it's a bad idea. I just say that it, I do know that that's the problem. Like, I know a lot of people have written an extension or two, and they're like, well, I would like to start offering that, but I don't feel like I want to do it as my full-time thing. And it's difficult in Joomla, because you need to set up the page and, you know, serve downloads from somewhere. It's not like you can upload it somewhere and just let WordPress have it. Uh, I think we're waiting for you for like five minutes. You had an idea. No. No? no? Okay, then let's move on. Well, well I mean, um would, would it be beneficial to use existing uh, source control? You know, I mean, it's reasonably easy to run your extension on GitHub and uh, deliver your updates and downloads from GitHub as well. And well, that would work with the free extensions for sure, but not for the paid ones. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that could be considered. It's free, free you know, there are also paid repositories, or like there are also uh, closed repositories on GitHub, so maybe that we could use that. I have an idea now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for calling you. I host the commercial ones on Joomla using an API key as a revenue generating system to scrap the adverts and just charge five cents for a commercial download from Joomla to the developer. Yeah, we choose, choose a number, a small, small number. Yeah, or do it on top of that. <laughs> In PrestaShop, they charge 50%. Yeah, that's true. To I will go back to search. They think that before changing the search mechanism in both states, yeah. we have to uh, check out what is the uh, accuracy of the search because we have in search two uh, two faults. One, when we miss uh, an extension in the search, which is offered for the developer and offered for the user as well. And the second one, when we show, and that's okay when I'm searching in WordPress in June, I'm too familiar to. Uh, and my eyes is skipping it, but uh, when you put something which is not belong to the raw search. So mm -hmm. before, somehow we have to log the search and to try to understand if it's a, a, good, search, a good result or not. Yeah, actually, that's the thing I'm personally trying to push forward in both communities. It's difficult, like it's more difficult than you think if you look at the details. But yeah, that's what gives you actually feedback what works and what does not work, or what works better or what because that's... I used to work on classification. So you may totally even have totally more knowledge of that than I do. But normally what you do is you prepare a core co of, of, uh, of a, database, or a database that's saying that's 
you know exactly every every uh, item to which uh, to which class is is, is belong, and then the, you, it's easy to see if your uh, algorithm is working. Uh, yeah, that could possibly work. Of course, it's difficult with the abundance of plugins we have because uh, it's, it's sometimes difficult to say, okay, so we should be on the top of the list because we know that it's, you know, the, the best place to hide the dead bodies on the second page of search results. And the um, second one is about the uh, vacation store. Yeah. Or vacation store uh, is that we have to learn not from WordPress but from uh, Apple and, and uh, Google uh, because there uh, people I think that they are forced to, to uh, sell their stuff from there, but they also have their own website and, and uh, publicity and everything. So they are not losing the recognition in one way, and, but they have a platform that it makes them easy to, uh, to sell the stuff. Yeah, I think it's an interesting uh, point that possibly we could go after things like Apple Store or uh, Google Play Store to think of certain things. Uh, we ha I think we have someone all there earlier then. Yeah. <coughs> two, two things. Um, first of all, it's in people's nature to complain a lot. As we <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but I also want to say thank you to all the chat uh, uh, volunteers because I think they do a really good job within the resources I have. Um, and the second thing is uh, something we could be uh, improving is doing some more integrations. Um, perhaps it's not possible to do the whole extension directly from within the Joomla installation, but perhaps we can have some more traffic to the website doing a banner at the bottom of the page, uh, for example. Yeah, that, I think that was one of the things that has been discussed both on the board level and within the JET team that uh, we, we should either have a good embedded plugin directory or none of it. Like having you know something that works some from time to time is not a solution. And I was just uh, related to the absence, um, we submit maybe like 5 to 10 iOS, iOS and Google Play apps a week. And so, but, you know, but generally I, I don't really think it's the only part of the apps that I experience at the moment, which is really much better, is um, like the related, you know, you might you know, also from this developer and you might also like, rather than the actual search and finding experience. No, actually, I think that search in Apple Store is terrible, and the user interface there requires a lot of uh, a lot of changes. But the nice thing is that if you imagine the jet storing the credit card details and being so that you are able to purchase everything you want with just single click, without you know trusting all those random developers that they will handle your payments correctly, uh, I think that will increase the trust and that will make purchases way easier. Uh, then, uh, then with, you need to go and click through all those different shops because every single one of us extension developers have to build one, and they're and they're way they're a different one from another. Uh, of course, that will limit some business models and stuff like this. So I'm not sure if we want to start from that, but that's definitely things where we could actually get ahead of anyone else in the open source market. Because even when PrestaShop does it. They do have, they do that in a very limited way. Like it's still not the, it's still not done to the possible extent of that project. Good. Okay. I'd like to thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, here are my contact details. <laughs>